Reactions happen when reactant molecules collide together. In one centimeter cubed of space, gas molecules can collide as often as a billion times per second. However, we don't see constant chemical change happening before our eyes. In order for these collisions to be successful, molecules must collide with the correct orientation, and molecules must collide with enough kinetic energy to break the required bonds. We can increase the number of successful collisions between molecules by increasing the frequency and kinetic energy of the collisions. If the reactant concentration increases, for example, the molecules collide more frequently, so the reaction rate increases. Some reactions involve solids. Solids react on their surfaces, so the area of the exposed surface is important. As the surface area increases, a larger proportion of the solid can collide with the other molecules. Smaller particles react at a higher rate than larger particles. If the temperature increases, the molecules move more quickly, collide more frequently, and with more energy. The reaction rate increases because there are more collisions every second, and each collision is more likely to have enough kinetic energy to break the required bonds. The minimum energy needed for a successful collision is called the activation energy. Increasing temperatures will push more molecules past this barrier. A catalyst is a molecule or material that causes the reaction rate to increase without undergoing a net chemical change. The change in energy during a reaction can be shown in a reaction profile. The reactants and products have different energies, labeled on the profile as horizontal lines. The difference between these energies is the change in free energy of the reaction. Energy is needed for the molecules to collide successfully, breaking bonds so that new bonds can be formed. The energy of the reacting species therefore increases during the reaction, reaching a peak between the reactants and products. The height of this peak is the activation energy, marked as Ea. Effective catalysts provide alternative reaction pathways with lower values of activation energy. The reactants and products are the same, but the peak of the reaction profile is lowered. A homogeneous catalyst is in the same phase as the reactants. It may react with a compound to generate a more reactive intermediate, but it must be regenerated in a later reaction step in order to be classified as a catalyst. A heterogeneous catalyst is in a different phase. For example, a solid catalyst may provide a surface on which gas molecules can react. Heterogeneous catalysts may bind to reactants, weakening bonds and bringing the molecules together so that they meet and collide more easily. As the surface area of the solid catalyst increases, the reaction rate also increases. Molecules have a range of kinetic energies. These can be represented as a Boltzmann distribution. The x-axis of the distribution is the kinetic energy. The y-axis is the number density of molecules, a measure of how many molecules have a given energy. To find the number of molecules within a given energy range, you can measure the area under the graph over that range. There are no molecules with zero energy. The graph rises to a peak, representing the average or the most commonly observed energy. It then tails off but never reaches zero. There's always at least a small probability of a molecule having a very high energy. Some Boltzmann distributions may be plotted slightly differently. The x-axis might be the speed of the molecules, rather than their energy. This will make the distribution look more narrow, but the graph can be interpreted in the same way, keeping in mind the relationship between kinetic energy and speed with the equation kinetic energy equals one-half mass times speed squared. The y-axis may show the proportion of the molecules or probability of the molecules displaying a given energy value rather than number density. Finding the area under the graph will now tell you the fraction or percentage of molecules within that range of energies. Increasing the temperature causes the average energy and speed of the molecules to increase. The Boltzmann distribution still starts at zero, but the distribution becomes broader, and the average energy peak shifts to the right. What about the height of the distribution? The number of molecules stays the same, 
so the area under the curve cannot change. If the graph is broader, the height of the peak must decrease to keep the area the same. As mentioned earlier, the activation energy is the minimum energy needed for a reaction to occur. The value of Ea can be labeled as a vertical line on the distribution. Any molecules to the right of the line have enough energy to react. If the temperature increases, the area of the graph above the activation energy increases. This means that a larger proportion of molecules exceed the activation energy barrier and can successfully react, causing the reaction rate to increase. If a catalyst is present, the shape of the distribution stays the same. However, the value of the activation energy is lowered. The vertical line, representing Ea, shifts to the left. With a larger proportion of molecules exceeding this value, there are now more successful collisions in the reaction. The rates of these chemical reactions depend on many factors, reactant concentrations, temperatures, and catalysts. Usually, reaction rates decrease over time, as reactants are used up, causing the reaction to take place more slowly. We see this in our concentration versus time graph as the slope of our line getting more shallow over time. However, this is not always the case. If a reaction is exothermic and the solution isn't cooled, the temperature will increase during the reaction. This will cause the reaction rate to increase, causing the concentration time graph to get steeper. But what if the graph is a straight line? This might be a little bit misleading, as the rate of the reaction is actually changing very little over time. The graph is in fact getting shallower, but the change is very hard to see. This kind of graph may occur in the case of a heterogeneous catalyst. The solid surface of the catalyst may be saturated with reactant so that more molecules can bind. Since the surface area of the catalyst is constant, it catalyzes reactions at a constant rate until so much reactant is used up that the saturation of the surface is no longer possible. The catalysis of dinitrogen monoxide into nitrogen and oxygen gas by a hot platinum wire can be used as an example. Here we can see dinitrogen monoxide adsorb into the platinum surface. The chemical reaction then takes place and molecules of nitrogen and oxygen are made as products. In summary, Chemical reactions occur when particles collide in the correct orientation and with enough energy to overcome their activation energy barrier. This barrier can be lowered through the use of an effective catalyst. We could see how the rates of these reactions change by plotting the concentration of the reactants versus time. Understanding collision theory will allow us to have a better appreciation of the mechanisms that allow chemical reactions to occur, which is a fundamental aspect of IB chemistry.